So Christine mentioned, we use a model called collaborative care management, which might not be familiar to a lot of your listeners, although I think the logic behind it will be uh, for those uh, engineers or technologists, I think in many ways, it's a more engineering mindset to the problem. So the beginning is to start with recognizing that probably 50 to 60% of people with depression and anxiety don't tell you they have it, either because they don't realize it or or they're embarrassed about it, or they're just hesitant to bring it up. But we've known for years that there's a series of pretty easy screening tools, really just quick surveys that you can give people at least on an annual basis or around any major health event, like a new diagnosis or hospitalization. And it picks up a lot more, not to diagnose people, but to screen them for higher risk, right? So it should be flagged for their primary care physician. So one thing we're doing is working with Common Spirit to do that. How do you implement and scale that? So really everybody's being asked and you pick up that 50, 60% of the people that maybe never were going to get, we're going to be uh, missed by care. And then you provide a warm handoff. So now when a patient shows up in the in, in Bakersfield clinics with they're able to say, let's say I'm the patient, instead of saying, hey, Spencer, you have depression, here's an antidepressant, you should think about seeing a therapist. You know, you could say, hey, Spencer, looks like you're struggling with your nerves, with your sleep, with your mood. I've, uh, I see that in a lot of people, and I, what I love is for a member of my team, Danny, to call you today or tomorrow. And what Danny does with a lot of my patients is checks in in between our visits. And what she does is is gives you the same tool we gave you this morning so we can really quantify how you're doing. Just check in on how things are going, if this medication I'm giving you is working. And she's got some coping techniques that she teaches a lot of my patients that they find helpful. So some people will recognize that as, oh, Danny is a therapist that's in-house. Others will just say, no, she's part of my team. You don't need to make that, you don't need to have that same division of this is something different. It's just part of a comprehensive primary care experience. But Danny'd be one of our licensed uh, mental health providers, and she'd do, just do that. Patient would experience us as a phone call or video visit, whichever they like, and often touching base two to five times over the course of that um, each month. And what we do is every month we give them that same assessment tool. In, in depression, it's con one commonly used as a PHQ-9, or there's different ones for anxiety, suicide risk, bipolar. In each of those cases, whenever possible, really measuring whether or not I'm getting better as a patient, and then doing brief psychotherapy interventions. Each of our Dannys, each of our care managers, then to have a, a weekly check-in with one of our psychiatrists, using that data registry to talk through those patients that aren't getting better. So let's say, again, using myself as an example, let's say I uh, am doing great with my morning meditation, but I stopped taking my antidepressant because I have erectile dysfunction. Eight weeks later, my PHQ-9 is dropped from 18 to 12. That's great. That's an improvement, lower, better on that score, but that's still pretty symptomatic. That'd be a classic person that say, hey, I'm feeling better, so I'm going to not bring it up, or I'm embarrassed about the side effect I have, so I'm never going to talk to my doctor about it again. By having that collaborative care team around, by having Danny with me, she'll know that, bring it up to the psychiatrist, doesn't need a, an hour long visit. In that case, they'd say, let's drop a quick note to the primary care physician, remind her that, congratulate Spencer on the meditation he's doing, think about changing it to a different SSRI that's less likely to create that side effect, because it looks like we're gonna need both the therapy intervention and a medication to make Spencer asymptomatic. So my primary care physician looks like a hero. She knows what's happening in my life and she has an actionable recommendation that she can act on. Oh, and Danny's really making sure that I don't slip through the cracks and that patient's being managed. And in my case, I'm being managed until we really declare success, which is when I'm asymptomatic, right? When I'm over it, when my depression's in remission, I can move on. So that's what we've been doing. We've been doing it for, for four years now across 40 medical groups and health systems and incredibly excited to be kicking off in in Bakersfield with Common Spirit and, and obviously taking the relationship hopefully to many other locations around the state and around the country.